Hi there, this video is for everyone who's a client of IT for Business, but if it's for anybody else who cares about their business as well, I want you to just stop and think just a little bit about IT security. It's not boring, it's urgent. This one's a really important story. So what's happened is my parents received a letter from their uh, IFA. And it's a pretty gut-wrenching letter if you're the CEO of the IFA. I've tried to mask out all the bits of it there, but let's have a look at what it really talks about. I'm going to read it out and then on the next day page we'll talk about what they have and haven't done. As a current client of the financial practice advisor within Wealth Management Company, I'm writing to you to say we're aware of a data breach within the company. Earlier this year we identified a cyber incident impacting isolated parts of our IT system. The incident was quickly contained, all necessary steps taken to ensure our system security were undertaken. Well, undertaken. That's very strange. We also informed the relevant authorities and regulators. I've been working with them throughout our response to the incident. We're now working with experts to fully investigate the data involved, which is a complex process and will take some time to complete. As a precaution, we recommend you take the following steps. And then it talks about general IT good practice. There's nothing particularly amazing there. If you'd like to discuss this further, don't hesitate to contact on blah, 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 blah. OK. Mm. So it's pretty shocking. It's, uh, let's think about what they actually said in this letter, which is a pretty carefully constructed letter. So it says earlier in this year. Well, it's now December and that letter was dated near the end of November. So at some point, January through to November, this happened. It's quite a long time to not tell your customers about it. It was quickly contained and all steps taken, but we don't know what that means. They didn't say what the steps were. They didn't define which systems. In fact, they didn't find anything. They are informing the authorities and they're working with the authorities. OK, well, I happen to know that there are very strict guidelines about informing the Financial Conduct Authority basically within 24 to 48 hours. So if that was some point this year, seems like a very long time has passed between reporting it to the authorities and telling your customers. And now they're working with data experts, but they don't say what data has been compromised. They don't say what they're trying to do. In fact, it doesn't say anything really about the detail. And it will take time to complete further investigations. It's terrifying. Now, this is someone else's problem. OK, it doesn't affect you, but let's think about it. Do you have protection on your computers? Well, if you're a customer of IT for Business, you definitely do. Do you train all your staff? Well, I've asked you to undertake training for staff, anti-phishing training and IT awareness training. Some of you have done it, some of you haven't. I can't make you, but I would love it if you were a bit stronger, some of you a bit stronger in your anti-phishing training and general awareness training. Do you have good processes in place? Well, how many of you got a data breach reporting process already defined, already thought through? How many of you have done that? Because I read that letter, and I don't think that CEO had one of those in black. He hadn't. They hadn't thought it through. Um, do you protect all your cloud account information? That means your Microsoft 365 and all the related stuff that goes with it. Well, if you're an IT for Business customer, yeah, we do that big time. So we've got the computers protected. We've got the security tools in place. Do we have two-factor authentication forced on everywhere? I think we do. We certainly should have. If you've gone and turned it off, I'm going to make you turn it on. Finally, you have an IT help desk service. So when you as a person or your staff have a problem, they have someone they can call 24-7. That's really important because and IT for Business do things a bit differently. We see IT support as something that needs to happen pretty quickly. You need to be back up and running as soon as possible. And if you work funny hours and you work Sunday morning or late into the evenings, that's your business. That's fine. So we have to have a service that's there. And so that's why we provide the 24 seven help desk. But there's been a piece that's been missing until fairly recently, at least missing as, at a price that was affordable. And that's a security operations center service. So what this is, is a group of human beings who work in a center 24 seven and they're constantly watching your machine and all the information that your machine reports about activity. And the SOC's job is to pounce on any machine that falls out of alignment. Something odd has happened. They pounce on it, they quarantine it, they roll it back to a safe state, and they contact the person who uses that machine. Now, previously, that kind of service has been 
25 to 30 to 40 pounds per machine per month, which is basically out of the range of certainly my customers in IT for Business. Uh, it's something that big corporates and enterprises they'll have, and the banks have always had this because they can afford it. It has just become available for us in our little world. Okay, so there's a product called Heimdall, or sorry, there's a company called Heimdall, and that's one of the best in class products. We get two or three services from them, depending on which of my clients you are. But the most important ones are the uh, anti phishing protection, which basically, if you click on something you shouldn't click on, it jumps in there and blocks it. And the anti ransomware. So if some software on your machine starts to encrypt or starts to compress software, it just stopped. That's it. Now, the company Heimdall have basically decided to go the next level and provide this SOC Center, assuming that you've got their tools installed, which we already have. It's a fantastic service. It's absolutely incredibly useful. And if I bring the story back to that letter, they clearly did not have a SOC service in place because if they did, they would have spotted this breach a lot sooner than they're reporting that they did. So 15 pounds per machine per month, it's a fantastic deal. Uh, please reach out to me if you're interested in this. I think if you're in a regulated sector, you pretty much can't avoid having it. You've, you've just got to do it. And it will bring down the cost of your insurance. I mean, this is one of the final pieces. Well, it's almost beyond what Cyber Essentials, uh, the government scheme requires. But it's not just about ticking the boxes. It's about thinking, I own this business. How would I feel if I had to write a letter to all my customers or clients to say, I'm really sorry, We've had a breach. I don't know what's been stolen. I don't know how long it's going to take. I really don't know how exposed you are. Do you want to write that letter? Do you really want to deal with that? I mean, basically, the trust is destroyed between you and your clients. How could how could you carry on trading like that? They're all going to leave. So certainly, my parents are going to be leaving. You could make that. They're certainly moving their investments elsewhere because you've lost all trust. So quite, uh, sorry, quite a sobering um, uh, message to send, but let's go through the last few things. Do you have a we've had an IT breach process? You probably haven't. It's one of those you really need to think it through. Who are you going to tell? How are you going to do it? What order? Which members of staff need to know what? If you're in a slightly larger company, you might need to think about how you're going to tell your larger clients about what's happened. I go on and on about two-factor authentication. It's two things. It's not just having that extra code to, to log in, but it's also you mustn't get fished. Because if you get fished, if you get persuaded to click on a link and persuaded to log in, even if you've got two-factor authentication, the bad guys have tricked you. So you're, you've been breached. So it's not just about having two-factor authentication, but that's a big deal. But it's about having the staff awareness not to fall for being fished. Obviously, if you're one of an IT for business client, you've got the protection tools and services in place. But I can't make you do the staff awareness and the training. So please have a long, hard think about have we done enough staff training? And finally, policies, procedures and tools. OK, the we've had a breach process is one of those. But increasingly, you need to start saying as the owners of the company and as the senior managers of the company, What's our policy on working remotely? What's our policy on traveling? Uh, what's our policy on if we've lost a computer, we, how do we react? And very specifically, the procedure. So the procedure for we've lost a computer is to do this, report to here, could do this. How do we order a new one? How do we make sure the data? There's a load of procedures, whereas the policies are aspirational things. Um, so there's a lot to think about as a spin-off from this letter, but you have to say, wow it's really happening to people it's really there what are we going to do about it so if you've got any more questions please re raise reach out to me alex at itforbusinessuk.com or give me a call using the mobile number or reach out on linkedin and speak to you soon thanks <laughs>